Come on and get fired up, everybody. Let's go. Man, I am jacked up. Woo! Man. Wow. Man. I feel like hitting something. <laughs> you always need a little bit of false enthusiasm before the game because invariably you got this guy that's just on the team because his dad had money and paid off the coach, you know what I'm saying? So you always have to have that false enthusiasm so he doesn't pee on himself before they announce him. This has been one awesome day. Give yourselves a hand. Give all of the people that created this environment for you a hand. Wow. Wow. If you go back to your school or to your neighborhood and you're unsuccessful, you need to choke yourself. Um, I was just talking to my wife over there. I was like, man, if I had this when we were growing up, man, I said, man, I would have been better or done more or done whatever, man. This, is, uh, this was fantastic. Uh, I don't have much to say, and I'm not going to be up here long. I'm happy that my wife came with me. Um, she's one of my heroes. Uh, she was uh, born in the projects of uh, Detroit, Michigan, and uh, she came up there with her brothers and sisters. All she did uh, was walk on to uh, the University of Michigan volleyball team. And thank you. All she did was walk on to uh, the University of Michigan volleyball team, uh, beat out two high school All-Americans to receive a scholarship, become a high school, uh, college All-American at the University of Michigan. And then when they, she didn't have any money to go to school, she finished there uh, with a full ride scholarship, then went back graduated top of her class, med school, and now she is a uh, family practice physician for Kaiser. Give it up for my wife right over there, Dr. Carla Galbraith, my hero. You don't even know, you coaches don't even know what you have gotten yourself into. You went out for the team because you want to have some fun or because you want to stay active, and what happens is, uh, you get in a game, and you are getting it handed to you. You're down by 60 points, and uh, all the parents want you fired, and this is not good for the school's image and everything. And then the coach is in between because he doesn't know whether to punch one of the parents in the mouth. And then the kids are cussing him out, and somebody is saying to him, I never played, but since we're down by 60, why don't you put me in? No, then we'll be down by 160 if I put you in. And, and, and so you, have, you, you are the only representation of your student body, your neighborhood, your community, and everybody expects perfection from every coach and every player, you always have to have the right thing to say, and you always have to do the right thing, but they don't know this guy that you're playing against is a butthole, and you don't know it, but, but you have to say the right thing, you have to be the right thing. And so we need this right now to keep our sanity right now, because people don't know what's happening in the field of play and the fact that I'm trying my hardest, but this person right here is on anabolic steroids and they've been playing since they was first. I just came out here because I wanted a uniform. I want to have a good time. Just came out here and now we fail is because our minds are not smart enough or I'm not callous enough in my mind. And so I've got to get my mind callous. We're all supposed to go pro and make our parents millions of dollars. If we don't go pro, we fail. You apply yourself to that. Athletics is fun. Coaching is fun. Getting to know people. <laughs> Stop making me laugh. Man. It's the serious part of this right now. Athletics is fun. Coaching is fun. Relationships that we forge is fun, and, 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 and unless you go to one of these special schools or whatever, really everybody that you're with, you're in the same neighborhood as, so it's kind of like, you know, when I was playing in Sacramento, I was in North Highlands, so it was like North Highlands against El Paso Heights, you know, it was, it, it, it was, it was a closeness and a camaraderie, and there still is that, don't ever lose that, don't ever lose the fact that everything that we learn in athletics
athletics, can be applied to your chemistry class, can be applied if you want to go and pledge for a fraternity. Life lessons don't change. And so if you don't have all these hours to work out, man, did you hear how much they work out? They go from running 20 miles and lifting weights and everything. Man, listen, I've got a I got two kids. I got to take them to school and everything. I just don't have copious amounts of time laying around. But even if you can't train for all these many hours, you can be positive and you can compete as best you can and you can be a good person. And I'm so hopeful today because when I look around this room, all of the gunk and all of the filth that we hear uh, on the internet and and uh, on the nightly news about our kids are going to heck in a handbasket and there's nobody to mentor. I don't even have any good mentors. Or we don't have any good mentors. We need a mentor to mentor us. Mentor. We got all these techno, man, I'm just over the whole thing. You know what I'm saying? And the coach is trying to win. And there's a girl laughing over there that's breaking me up up here. But anyway, <laughs> but especially in the African-American community where 76% of all of our children are in single family homes. And so, and I have to deal with guys that have been mothered too much and fathered too little. You can't raise uh, your voice at them because if you raise your voice at them, what? Are you disrespecting me? You coming at me? Who you are? No, dude, I want you to block that guy right there. I'm not hollering at you. I'm just excited because we have a chance to win. If you would ever get that guy blocked any time tonight, we'd be fine. <laughs> so you can't raise your voice because then you just disrespected him. I'm like, dude, I've been disrespected my whole life. So I'm like, Jimmy Johnson screaming at me like, dude, getting called an a-hole. I never turned around to Jimmy Johnson and said, you know what, you disrespected me. You know, that's funny to me. You know. <laughs> they holler because they care. And they're not hollering at you. They're just hollering at the situation. You know what I'm saying? The situation makes me holler trying to win the game. You know. And so if I had anything to kind of tie this together, uh, <laughs> I got drafted out of USC to take Ozzie Newsom's place, and, and, and I thank God for Ozzie uh, because uh, he just was a smart guy, told me a lot about how to be a pro, taught me a lot about the NFL, and he's one of the greatest executives in the NFL now. Appreciate his friendship. Uh, when I got drafted to take his place by the Cleveland Browns, I met the late Art Modell, and he had a, when, it, when I came over there and signed my contract, guy named David Morway, who was my agent from San Diego, um, he called me in his office, Art Modell. He had a big old stogie, smoking. Hey, Scott. I said, hey, Mr. Modell. He said, I'm going to give you one word of advice. I'll give it to you guys today. He said, success is not being at the right place at the right time. Success is being at the right place at the right time and realizing you're there. Some of you parents, if, if, if some of you coaches, if, if, if you look back over your life, you've been at some awesome places, at some awesome times, that gummit, I didn't realize it. I'll give you my own experience. When I was at Floor Tower at USC, I met this girl who introduced herself to me as Janet. And she used to rap on the side. And she was a nice looking girl, I guess, you know? Okay, she was a nice looking girl. <laughs> she used to rap all the time. She was friends with another girl named Macy. And she was all over me. Of course, I was stupid just from Sacramento, and I'm glad to be in L.A., so I'm doing everything but the right thing. I was in the right place at the right time and didn't know it. Her name, her stage name was Queen Latifah. 
she was roommates with another girl named Macy Gray. So, $80 million later, I realized I was in the right place at the right time, but I wasn't aware of it. You are living some of the best times of your life. This won't be the only best time of your life, but man, you are in a great situation. Realize it. Have fun. Take everything that you have learned today. Internalize it. Put it into practice. When I was playing in Sacramento, this is my last story. When I was playing in Sacramento, I was playing against this guy who played at Sac High, a guy named Kevin Johnson. He was kind of good. And, and uh, <laughs> so I was playing against Kevin. And Kevin called me and said, hey, Scott, what's up? I said, hey, what's up, Kev? He said, you back in town or are you still living in Detroit? I said, no, I'm back in town. I'm here in San Francisco. He said, man, I want you to come and interview for this position. I said, what position is that, man? He said, I want you to be chaplain for the Kings. I'm like, man, there's 100,000 people that are interviewing for that position. I'm not interested in that position. I like athletics. I'm going to do my thing here. He said, man, just come and talk. So I, so, so I came and talked to the Kings, and they had a guy in the room named Mark Jackson. And they asked Mark Jackson, they said, what do you think about this guy, this football guy that just interviewed for this job? He said, don't interview anybody else. Hire this guy now. They called me about two weeks later, and they said, Scott, we want you to be the chaplain for the Kings. I said, wow, thanks. <laughs> so I hung the phone up. I was like, <laughs> all right, y'all, I can be that, sure. All right, thank you. Later on, me and Kevin went to lunch, and we were talking just about old times and everything. He said, who would have thought that two guys, one from a little ghetto in North Highlands, other from a little ghetto in Oak Park, would end up making something out of themselves in life? I'm leaving with this. You don't know who you're sitting next to. But I promise you that the next leaders of the state of California, the next leaders of this nation, the next leaders of our community, the next leaders of our uh, uh, educational institutions are coming from some people that are right in this room right now. I'm so happy to be here. Have a fantastic day. Thank you.